I'm Nancy, 48 years old. I've been living with my husband and his mother since a few years ago. Nancy, do you know where my socks are? I want to go for a walk, but I can't find them. Gwen, are you wearing two socks on your right foot? Oh, you're right. No wonder it was uncomfortable to walk. We start living with her when she is diagnosed with dementia. But thankfully, her symptoms are still mild. And I only need to take care of her from time to time. Your foot must be feet warm from two layers of socks, keeping it away from cold. That's true. I hear some people turn to quick temper, but she's more like an innocent young child. I suppose my stress from home care is nothing compared to some others. Done. Let's go for a walk together. After fixing up her socks, we go out for our daily walk. Even though her symptoms are mild, I can't let her go out alone. Since I've switched to working from home and taking care of her, I've been surprised and distracted by her absurd actions. But my days have been quite peaceful with her. By the way, I haven't seen Johnny lately. If he's, he's misbehaving outside, I will scold him, okay? Gwen mentions at the dinner table. He's coming back tomorrow. This business trip is longer than usual. Ah, I see, business trip. I thought he was just wandering around somewhere. She sounds a bit disappointed, which makes me chuckle. Were you about to punish him? My husband Johnny is not a bad guy, but he is too laid back, which sometimes is problematic. He easily gets lost in time with work or hobbies, and he is irresponsible with money as well. I have to give him his allowance bit by bit, otherwise he spends it all at once. It's been Gwen's role to scold him every time I'm troubled. She used to be a scientist. She has a striking way of grilling Johnny with her logic. And it's entertaining to watch him unable to counter. I suppose my relationship with my mother-in-law is much more harmonious compared to some others. Hence we are able to live peacefully together. In spite of that, as Gwen mentions, Johnny has been absent from home more often. He says he's working harder, as my income is reduced due to the change of in my work style. But I have a mixed feelings. That's because our financial status hasn't been affected since we move in with Gwen and there is no rent to pay. I would rather have him spend more time with his mother so I want him to come home sooner than later. He has been coming back quite late and having more business trips in these three months. When he's finally back this time and I'm taking out his laundry from his suitcase, I found undershirts that I haven't seen before. Hey, where did you get these undershirts? What? He looks trivially surprised by my lighthearted question. They were in your suitcase. They didn't look like the ones I bought for you, so I was wondering. Oh, oh yeah, I bought them. The ones you packed were old, weren't they? They were torn. Really? I packed everything new. Did you tear them? Are you sure? Maybe they were poorly made. Oh, I see. His suspicious behavior makes me skeptical. Patch, don't you think it's strange? I speak to Patch, the stray cat who has been adored by Gwen. He's now friendly with me too. Well, he only meows when I speak to him. I checked thoroughly afterward, and I smell a scent of perfume too. Is it an affair? When I rub Patch's fluffy stomach, he pats me back with his soft paw. Are you comforting me? In that case, let's investigate. Oh my god, Gwen, were you listening? 
If you have a doubt, act right away. Don't worry, he's careless, so he's incapable of hiding anything. There must be pieces of evidence left behind. She chuckled. Have you already made the assumption that he is cheating? I wink at her, but I decided to hire a private detective. Of course, I'm going to prove that he is innocent. However, no way. I can't believe my eyes looking at the report. When Johnny is back from his business trip and laying on the sofa, I ask him quietly, I have an important talk with you. He seems to sense my seriousness and sits up on the sofa. Do you have something to tell me? What? He flusters, which makes me sigh deeply. Do you have something to tell me? What? What's going on? You have something to say, don't you? I look into his eyes just as Gwen does to him when she questions him. He looks down. Um, I'm sorry, business trips are half lies. He keeps his head down and can't find words anymore. Who have you been seeing? Where have you been going? Well, honey, the more I question, whiter his face becomes and his eyes shift all over the place. So you don't deny that you're going somewhere and seeing someone, right? Well, his face is distorted from discomfort. I stare at him with heaviness in my chest. Do you spoil her child? What? How do you? He's now pale as a ghost. I asked you about your undershorts the other day, right? Afterward, I went through your suitcase and noticed a slight scent of perfume, so I had you follow. I show him a picture of him, his girlfriend, and her child smiling. I, I had to fling out of my drunkenness ten years ago. As soon as I found out she was married, I never contacted her. Once he takes a plunge, he starts pouring out the details. But a few months ago, she suddenly showed up and told me that she was divorced and raising a child alone. She was struggling with her life and wanted me to listen, so we went for a drink. While we were talking, we started having feelings again. But when she asked me to divorce you, I said no. I did dismiss her request. He glances up while he's telling me his excuses and keeps talking. But then, she said the child was mine. I denied that it was impossible. And then she asked me to do the DNA test. I was sure I wasn't the father, but I was. On top of it, the reason she was divorced was that her ex found out about it. My kid is really happy to find the real father. That I'm having a hard time leaving them, you know. He tells all that at once and then trails off. What do you plan to do from now on? Uh, well, I... He flusters again, and I sighed heavily. If I didn't find out, you thought you could work it out, huh? I'm sure I would have discovered sooner or later. To begin with, I'm handling all the finance in this house. I've been wondering why your salary doesn't increase despite the late night and the business trips. Then I found the undershirts and the scent. Don't you think it's crazier to not notice? Aside from that, if this girl is really your daughter, you need to settle things out for her future. Let's discuss this in a week. Think hard about it. However, just five days later, inconceivable things happen. Nancy! I run to Gwen who is holding a manila envelope in her hand. Inside, there were divorce papers and a letter. I see that he has already signed the papers. The letter reads, Dear Nancy, I thought over and over and decided to leave you. I wanted to focus on my daughter and her future. 
I couldn't leave her and her mother while they struggle with money. I had never thought that I wanted a child, but I fell in love with my daughter. Please divorce me. I wish to spend my life with my new family. I have a responsibility as a father. Please look after my mom. You two get along well, so I feel comfortable leaving her with you. Take care, Johnny. You want to talk about it? Gwen put her hand softly on my back. I can't hold my tears and start bowling. I tell her everything and read the letter. And then she holds me tightly in her arms. I can't forgive my own son for what he's been doing. He needs to learn his lesson. Who does he think he is? I will support you in whatever you decide to do. I'm ready to hunt him down till the end. Don't be shy and tell me what you want to do with him. I'm astonished by her rage. It is incomparable to when she normally scolds Johnny. My mind starts to see the situation differently by watching her. Gwen, I was wrong. I told myself to think about the child and wanted to listen to what Johnny had to say. I looked at it from the third person's perspective, but that was crazy. I haven't told him how I feel at all, and he doesn't even show any concern towards me in the letter. He writes about me like a helper. I can't stand it. I'm going to retaliate against him. The bubbles of anger are coming out of me now. We get down to coming up with our strategy right away. I'm going to ruin you. And then his payday arrives. Gwen and I are eating dinner when we hear shuffling at the front door. He's here. Gwen giggles. We hear a knocking on the door. Who is it? I respond coldly and look out from the window. There is Johnny looking agitated on the porch and asking me to open the door. Oh, even though you've left your wife and your own mother behind, you want to come back after just a couple weeks? Gwen comically says and pops her head out beside me. No, I don't want to come back. Give me back my paycheck. He yells impatiently. But you have your own bank card and cut mine off. You took some out. Reason why he's in such distress is that Gwen and I have convinced his office to change the payable account. Let's take his salary. When Gwen first mentions it, I think it's impossible and her symptoms are worsening. But he cheerfully says with a smile, It's out of question to have his salary deposited into someone else's account. However, if it's another account of his, there's no problem. What? She makes a call to his office. Mr. C? It's been a long time. How have you been? I would like to ask you for a favor today. She has been a good friend of a CEO for a long time, and he also thinks the world of her. He willingly accepts her request after hearing the circumstances. Your paycheck is in your account for sure. I also have another account under your name. I forget to tell you though. The kind of relationship the CEO and Gwyn has makes it possible, and he agrees to pay into the account that she had opened an extra life savings for Johnny. It's my money! Yes, it's your salary, and as long as Nancy is your wife, you must pay her a portion from it. What? He is stunned by Gwyn's reply. Johnny, I still have a divorce paper. I haven't signed or submitted it. We are still married. Why? To be honest, I have thought to get it done and over with immediately, but Gwen and I realize that it's worth staying married while we go through our plan. I'm saving the divorce papers for the time being. If you really want to divorce, you shouldn't just leave it to me, but make sure that I sign and submit it, you know? That's all I say and draw curtains and walk away from the window. 
Of course, the door lock has been changed and a sturdy bolt lock as well. All the windows are shut and locked, and the video surveillance is installed and working normally. Johnny walks around the house and sees if there is any opportunity to get inside, but he gives up in the end. Here, you can use it for whatever you want. No way! Gwyn passes me on an ATM card, but I don't plan to touch the money. My own paycheck is enough to live for now. Even though I take it from her hand, I immediately put it in a safe place. A few days later, Johnny visits again. We've asked him to come with his daughter and her mother. Huh? Why? Mr. C? Yes, he offers to act as a witness today. We have a DNA test kit for a legal paternity. I smile broadly, to which Johnny returns an unpleasant look. I've already told you that the result has been out. But I haven't seen the actual collection of specimens and the result on paper. Johnny reluctantly agrees when he sees my intent glare. Hmm, you don't look comfortable with it. Is there some problem if we check? It's not a big deal for us. It's up to you to decide. But we have told you that we will change back the account and finalize the divorce if you agree to one request, right? Our request is to take the specimens in front of us and prove the paternity of your daughter. Mr. C is here to be the witness as mentioned before. Okay, okay. Just do it and get it done with. As long as this ends here, I don't care. Johnny sighs heavily and grabs the test kit, but his girlfriend looks white as a ghost. Oh, why? Are you leaving? She backs away slowly, roughly pulls her daughter's hand, and without a word, she turns around and runs out the door. Wait! Johnny is stunned by her escape. Her action proves that she has been lying, but we are not done with Johnny. Gwen says to him who is left alone in shock, If it was me, I would take the test and pocket the money for now, and then before the result is out, I would plan an escape. Maybe she is not that clever, is she? She laughs out loud, to which I make a mental note, dementia or not. Never step on the wrong side of her foot. But what do you mean, my child? Did she really test your specimens? I waive the additional report from the investigation. Your girlfriend gets around. It's amazing that she approached every single guy she has slept with around the time she conceived. But true love is only one. She has been together with a guy since high school who is currently unemployed. He seems to be the father. No, that can't be. Why don't you go and check? His current address is on the report. He scowls at me and hastily runs out of the house with a report in his hand. Such a fool! Gwen shrugged her shoulder. We thank Mr. C for coming all the way amidst his busy schedule. He gladly accepts the gift of wine and gives us a big hug when he leaves. We throw away the DNA test kit as it is useless now. Later on, Johnny comes back knocking on the door. We look at each other expectantly with wide smiles. I'm told she is not my daughter. On top of it, my saving is all gone. She keeps denying it even though I show her my bank statement. The porch light shone a disappointed Johnny like a spotlight in the dusk. Gwen and I watch him in despair and smile discreetly. And what do you want now? Gwen asked holding her laughter. What do you mean? He mumbles like a little boy. But she doesn't hold back. This is a house of a wife and a mother you have left behind. You have left on your own will. 
so I can't let you come back just because you change your mind. Mom. Mom? Who are you calling that? We are like strangers as soon as you get divorced. Besides, I have a very precious daughter who is willing to look after me even though I have troublesome dementia. I doubt that there is a son who can abandon his sick mother anyway. Johnny tears up with a grim look on his face. On the contrary, I tear up from the happiness of being called a precious daughter. Please take the envelope in the post and leave. The money you need for the time being is separated into a smaller envelope inside. If you use it all at once, you won't last until your next paycheck. Be careful. You will get the full paycheck from next month. Nazi, you're the only one for me, after all. If you still care about me, we can restart, can we? His face brightened up, but I have absolutely no intention to do so. That envelope is my last kindness to you. Take care of yourself. Wait, please. It was all my fault. I will never ever make the same mistake. Please forgive me. With a bang of the door, he is shut out by Gwen. After that, we sold the house and moved out. Gwen makes me her legal guardians before her dementia worsens, and I'm now able to move all the assets as I wish. Her meticulousness renews my respect for her. She has chosen to live at the residential care facility, and I have my own apartment nearby. It gives me peace of mind to be close to her. I'm back to my full-time work now. As soon as all the legal matters and the relocation were done, I finally submitted the divorce paper and demanded alimony. Gwen has forced the lawyer to collect all the money in Johnny's extra savings account, which she had opened for him, and Johnny gave up without a fight. I'm a bit sad about losing the status of her daughter-in-law, but Gwen and I will continue having a great friendship.